Hi guys! So I am calling this my anti-character study for Assassin's Quest because I didn't really want to do it. <laughs> the thing that I like to do on this channel is the character study from the book that I just read and this one was so depressing I found myself not really wanting to talk about it afterwards. But before I go too far, it is a character study, anti or otherwise, so spoilers for Assassin's Quest Book 3 of the Farseer Trilogy. Now people warned me before I read this book that it was going to be slow, maybe boring, not happy, and I was like, I don't care, it's a quest. I like quest stories, let's go. And it certainly is a quest. <laughs> Not the kind I'm normally used to though. And I will say that really the only good thing that happens in the entire book is that Night Eyes lives at the end. Obviously you know Fitz will live at the end because he's the one narrating it. I knew that the fool would live because there's future books involving him. But everything else bad happening to him made me think, why not just save that to the end? Why not just make one more bad thing happen to Fitz? Why not, when everything else bad has happened? But Nine Eyes lives, and that's why it gets a pass from me. So the book itself is a quest, but it is not a fun, adventurous quest. It's more like a long, trudging journey. And I found it interesting that each part of his quest was a quest towards people. He had a person in mind that he was trying to get to, and at each point of his quest, it basically fails. After having to take the time at the beginning to find his humanity, become human again, he already starts ruining his relationships. He only has a couple of them left, but he does not care for them. He breaks them, both Chade and Burek, because of the way Fitz speaks to them and treats them, leave him. So now he is all alone, except for Night Eyes, and he gets this idea. I'm not a royal assassin anymore. No one tells me who to kill or when or why, so I'm going to kill the person that I want to. So he sets off towards Regal. He sets off to assassinate Regal, which fails. So you take this whole beginning section of the book, which I thought is the whole book about him getting to Regal. That seems like a weird destination. But that's where he sets off to. It's not easy and it's not successful. The only reason he makes it out alive is because of Verity, who is the next person that he sets out after. That's the next person who's the end goal of his quest. And in his mind, as he's trying to get to Verity, who says, come to me over and over, that's the thing he must follow whether he wants to or not, he still has it in the back of his mind that at the end, He'll finish his quest and he'll go home to Molly and their baby. The baby that he did not know he was going to have, the baby that he never meets except in his skill dreams, and his dream is to get to them, to settle down and have a quiet life with them. Molly will forgive me, she'll take me back, we'll be together at the end. And part of what was so frustrating about this book is that it's a quest and each part of the quest takes so long and it's so hard for Fitz and they all either fail or don't turn out how he expected, like with Verity. He does get to Verity, that part doesn't fail. Another thing that made me a little frustrated with this book and made me not excited to make this video was that I didn't really like Fitz. When you love a character, or at least if you feel strongly about them, like if there was a character I hated, that would be a strong enough emotion to make me go, I'm making a video about them. But Fitz was very blah to me. I didn't really like him. He didn't gain my admiration. I wasn't necessarily rooting for him. And I found it a little difficult to care about what happened to him. And I don't think that's Robin Hobb's fault in the way she wrote Fitz as a character. I think it is her fault in the way she treats Fitz's character. So much abuse has happened to Fitz. So many things go wrong. So much gets taken from him. It becomes difficult to invest your emotions in what happens to the character because why bother 
if the thing you're hoping for just gets taken away from him. Why should I bother investing in hoping for him to get to his baby when based on what's happened to him so far, that's probably not gonna happen and if it does, it won't be what he expects. It's like Hob gave us the readers PTSD from the first two books. I don't feel like I can hope for anything good for Fitz at this point. I didn't admire Fitz. I didn't admire his motivation for what he's doing and where he's going. And it just made it hard to root for him. You know, like, gosh, I really hope he makes it to Verity when he wasn't even going to go to Verity. He was going to go back to Molly. And the only reason he's going is because he was skill implanted, whatever you call that. Verity basically made him go. He impelled him to go. And really, Fitz is kind of selfish. His motivation to get to Regal and kill him was selfish. Although over the course of the book, he does kind of see what Regal's rule is doing to the people. And so he does want to take Regal out to help his people, but that's not why he went in the first place. And he was always selfish in regards to Molly. I never thought that Fitz ever deserved Molly. Fitz never prioritized her in his life. He held her back from the rest of his life. He never gave himself fully to her. And he kind of selfishly used his feelings for her and her feelings for him. She did love him, but he used that to get what he wanted, which was feelings of someone caring for him, bedroom time. And he just used those feelings like an excuse to disregard her future. I kind of talked about that in my last video about Fitz, which you can go watch, but he does not show a care and gentleness towards what the rest of her life might be like. He's really thinking more about himself. He did not show her true love. His actions toward her is not what true love looks like. And if it was true unselfish love, it still would not have been enough for her. She needed him to give up what he was doing and focus on her and he wouldn't. Now, he did skill dream Molly as she was giving birth. And in the midst of all the pain she was going through, she does not want to be alone. She wishes that the father of her baby were there and she thinks that she would forgive him if he was there, just so she wouldn't be alone. <sighs> Fitz was her young love. He is the genetic father of her baby. She probably would have taken him back in that instance when she thought she needed him. But you know what? Fitz was not there, and guess who was? Beric. He was not only physically there for her, but he is kind to her. He is gentle with her. He protects her, and he loves her un- selfishly. Again, when he skills her, he sees that she is connecting to Burek and Burek is like slowly taking the place that he would have wanted. And this breaks his heart. He wishes he was there. He wishes he could have been. He wishes things had been different and he could be with the woman he loved and that daughter that he never even got to meet. If he couldn't be there, there's no one he would rather have with Molly and his daughter than Burek. Bjork is a man that he trusts. Okay, and I'm not really gonna talk about baby Nettle because everything involving her makes me feel emotional and the parts of the book that made me cry were the very beginning when he says how patience cared for his body after he died and tended his wounds <sighs> and everything having to do with Nettle. So not gonna talk about it, but that is part of what emotionally drew me into the book even if I did not like Fitz because of it. By the way, speaking of making babies, <laughs> what keeps drawing women to him? <sighs> I don't get it. I don't know whether he is supposed to be super handsome, maybe in like a rugged sort of way, but he is gruff, he is grungy, he is battered, he's not very nice to people around him, he kind of keeps to himself, and yet, he keeps running into women by chance that I guess are kind of into that. If there was like one, maybe, I wouldn't be surprised. But everywhere he goes, there's a woman who just wants him for some reason. But Fitz keeps turning them down because of Molly. Won't Molly be happy to hear that he didn't sleep with anyone else because of thinking of her? Can you hear my sarcasm? Even Ketrikin towards the end? 
started to look at him like, wouldn't be so bad, but only because he looks like Verity. <laughs> and I was glad that for the end portion of his quest, he has companions. He has Night Eyes. He has the Fool, Ketrikin, this uh, Kettle and Song couple of ladies that he met along the way who for some reason keep following him. And out of these companions, he has at least one that actually cares for him as a person. It's the Fool. The Fool cares about him. And to be fair, there is some fulfillment at the end. They get to the end of the quest. They make it to Verity. To be honest, I wasn't sure if they would. And this is the part of the quest ending that's not what he expects. They get to Verity. He expects to take Verity home, who will make more children with Ketrikin, who will rule the kingdom, but no. He turns into a dragon. So the dragons rise. The bad guys are beaten. Fitz chooses to take the route of not killing Humperdinck. I mean, Regal. <laughs> I'll be honest, whenever I picture Regal in my mind, I kind of think of Prince Humperdinck. I don't know why. But I think this is kind of a poetic ending for Fitz because it's like his final act of rejecting his identity of assassin. He never liked it. He was never particularly good at it, at least in this third book. And when given this final choice, he chooses not to kill. He does not live happily ever after, but he does live, which is more than could be said for the end of book two. And Night Eyes lives, and the people he cared the most about, the Fool and Ketrikin, also live. So when you got to the end of this book, did you feel like it was worth the trudge? Despite the slowness and despite my frustrations, I did find it hard to put down until I was done because I wanted to know what happened at the end. The next series by Robin Hobb that I will be reading will be The Live Ship Traders, which I read like 20 years ago, so I don't remember much and I'm looking forward to reading those again. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other character study videos or subscribe here for more fantasy and bookish content like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.